very casual. Okay, so we got a four Lord players and four Big Boss players. Two of them Big Boss 3, two of them Big Boss 2. And there's actually one player who's top 50. And the other guys are actually three digits. This guy's barely three digits. So it's going to be very interesting to see like uh, who places where. Because I personally believe that Big Boss is very close to Lord. Definitely not close to top 1000 Lord, but pretty close, you know? So let's see what people have opened with so far. Um, we got some bounty hunters in here. Uh, Timber Saw, Axe, someone got Riches round one. TK is opening up with Savages, Venno, Edge. Like, the first three rounds of any game is very important because it can dictate what kind of composition you can go into easily, right? Because if you get a lot of units in one like uh, composition, then you can win streak. But if you don't and you need to like find those units, you need to dig for them and you're like opening packs are like really bad then it's gonna be hard for you to win streak and win streaking sometimes is very impo important because you obviously get more gold and you can save yourself health so you have more room in the later stages of the game to you know be able to uh play around with it if you lose too much health in the early game you don't have the flexibility in the mid late game after that so let's watch what people have got any cool items um, for so item wise most people will definitely opt for chainmail or gloves of hay so we got some chainmails here everyone's got a chainmail uh, he his items look kind of pepega he's got blade mail blink chainmail blink blystone so this the pockets is gonna probably want to find a defensive item he already has two aggressive items um, my rule of thumb is like try not to get any more than two defensive or two aggressive items in the first three packs of your um, first three packs of uh, items that you can choose from like if I had two chainmails and then in my third pack I had a choice between chainmail gloves and like blystone I'm definitely taking the gloves if I have a choice between chainmail vip booster and blystone I'll probably take the blystone over the third chainmail normally it's really hard to utilize three chainmails <sighs> So is Yeeks gonna wreck them all? Ah, uh, no, not really. It depends. Sometimes you can high roll. Sometimes you can also play a composition that is not very good late game, and someone understands the meta better than you. So it looks like Baby here is going for um, a hunter opener. He's fighting into Kyle's. Okay, that's a Blink Nature's Prophet new technology. I mean, Blink NP is pretty good now, though, right? Because if he gets two star, he can pretty much like one shot the board so um normally this kind of opener is not that good like beastmaster plus two axes because they have no real synergies apart from the brawny so they get like a little bit of extra health if it were me if i was to try to reduce the damage i take on a board i would have actually used the savages i think i would have had more better chance with savages but maybe baby's idea is like he wants to use his beast if it does get even one kill and he's gonna go into brawny hunters like, he wants to be able to escalate, you know, that, right? So he can actually put warriors in. He can he can take out he can take out the axe, put in a tusk or the pudge. He also put in the pudge, which is um, more health than tusk, but obviously doesn't do much damage. Tusk can do a lot of damage, and he has got a blightstone. Not equipped yet, but the hands. It's kind of... Alright, and now he's gonna fight into... Uh, very weak board, I would say. But this board has Heartless, so let's see. Heartless versus Beastmaster. Beastmaster was kind of in the front lines. He somehow got there, which is really bad for him because uh, you don't want your Beastmaster to die first. He's like your highest DPS unit. Alright, what else we got here? Um, so anything interesting? Oh, it's Pocket's got a 2-star entry already. So if he high rolls like a Trem Protector, he's going to be so freaking strong. After that, he's also running the three savage bonus at the moment, which is really good in the early game. Uh, Trem Protector or Nature's Prophet would be very beneficial for the Druid. So he's going to have like this really strong like early game, you know, two star board. Jehan also has Edge 2. He's running a sniper for now for the scrappy bonus. Okay. Okay. 
What else we got here? Go six savages? Please don't go six savages. You're just gonna play random stuff, Yeeks? Yeeks, you should try to win, bro. So Yeeks, it looks like he's um. So what Yeeks doing is doing right here? Like we could we could watch the top player too, right? Like what he's doing right here is he's got a mix of scrappies and he's got a mix of knights on his board, right? So instead of selling his units for economy and hitting that ten gold eco, he's trying to create the strongest board he can while controlling, uh, while, while maintaining as many different um comps that he can go into, right? So he's got clock and bounty that can. Uh, branch into uh, Scrappies, and he's got CK and Abaddon with Batrider on his bench who can branch into Knights. So whichever board he hits, or whichever units he hits in the next packs, he's gonna like commit to that, right? So instead, some what some players do is like they go into a game and they're like, okay, I'm gonna play Knights no matter what, you know? And then what ends up happening is you never get your Knight pieces. But if you play like how Yeeks is playing, right? Once you feel like you have enough pieces that you can commit into one strategy, you can just go with that. And he's actually sacrificing some economy so he can like keep it open. Right now he sold his other two pieces. He's keeping the same board because his uh, shop at the moment is not showing him like the strategy he wants to go into. But there is a sniper here, which is the third scrappy. He's holding on to that, right? And it can also, and now he's also has a potential to go into hunters because he's got beastmaster and draw ranger on his bench. So it's like a lot of things are going through his mind right now as to like what he can play into. The next pack is gonna decide like uh, a bit more um, into what composition he should go into. Like he's gonna remove either the scrappy, the knights, or the hunters just so he can hit his eco again. To be honest, he's like win streaking, but in a way, he probably prefers like he did lose a round so he can get the free reroll to like understand what he wants to go to. But in the meantime, he's also like scouting the other players to see what they're doing too. So he just hit like Drow and Bat, right? This is like a super powerful board. With Drow and Bat, you're more likely to go into Knights because the Drow Ranger is actually a really good unit in Knights. Because it gives um, Heartless with the Abaddon early game. So he actually took out the CK. I'm not sure I can agree with this. I think CK is too good with um, Heartless bonus. It's a lot better than Scrappy bonus, I feel. Like, the CK giving the extra health in the on the board and like right-clicking units with a minus armor would have been like super nice there. If he was, if his aim was to create the most powerful board he can. He's still gonna win here, probably. Oh, uh, not too many Eidolons, I guess. This bat, this Razor has like so many stacks of Napalm on him. All right, let's take a look at someone else. What's Jehan up to? Jehan's got uh, some kind of Scrappies lined up with Assassins, possibly Scrappy Assassins, maybe. TK has got Knights going, just a few, not a lot, but this is one of the situations where like TK. You know, he doesn't have too much flexibility in what he can go to. Maybe he can find like a TB2 star out of nowhere, but like majority of his board is knights and he's trying to eco the best that he can. Um, Kyle's got some... He's got uh, some druids running. He's got two shadow feeds in the shop, two, two clockworks in the, in the thing. So because he's not making up his like mind as to what he's going to play, he's not hitting his 20 gold eco right now, right? He has like... This random Wind Ranger, who's just sitting on the board, but he's also got two Linas sitting on the bench. So this is like a really um, how do you call it? Uh, like this is a really confusing situation for a player to be in. So he has shot pair of Shadow Fiends, Lina, and Clockwork. So he's probably looking to see like which one of these units will hit first, and he'll try to sell the other ones for Eco, and then like try to play into that like as well. But I feel like this one was a bit more like, how do you say, um, I feel like he could have sold this Windrunner. Like, this Windrunner probably didn't matter. He wasn't going to win the round, in my opinion, with this Windranger. Like, it doesn't it doesn't do anything on this board, right? It doesn't have any benefits. So he could have, like, added another piece instead. Oh, this is so good right now. Because he has Nature's Prophet 2-star, he's going to have Trent and NP 2-star. So maybe he kept the Wind Ranger so he can like 
find Trent and then have elusives, right? But I, I probably think that uh, AM is better than Wind Ranger. I mean, there's a lot of gold that's on this bench, by the way. There's a lot, a lot of gold. Uh oh, double Shadow Fiends on the board. That means that Demon, Demon Synergy is turned off. Don't forget, guys, um, if you use the same demons, even if it's two of them, their Demon Synergy turns off. It's like, I don't know if it's a bug, but I feel like it's intentional. Like, they're actually doing it that way. Okay, so let's look at someone else. Leroy at the bottom here. He's got uh, some warriors and then he's got bounty. Uh, I think Leroy is stabilizing a little bit right now. He should be okay. Like, Bounty 2 is actually a really good unit in the early game. Um, I'm not entirely sure what his game plan is at the moment. It's hard to say. He's only got Warriors right now. If he's trying to play for good stuff, he might want to eco a bit harder. Okay, so he did hit a Tusk 2 star. That's good too. So he's got like a bunch of really strong 2 star units. I'd replace the Tiny over the tusk so solder gives a minus armor this one gives him tank damage damage very good balance for leader he's gonna come back from that bottom position for sure who's wish chicken right now jayhan with Ench 2 ogre 2 wow this does not look like a very strong board by the way <laughs> it actually looks like a kind of a weak board so in my opinion because he has contract um and he has ogre 2 but no good units to hold his contract with I would actually put the contract on like a uh, one star sacrifice. So let's say like a timber saw. I would have put this on the timber saw instead of the chainmail. Give this contract to the timber, let put him in the front line, let him die, and then the ogre will get buffed. Now the ogre with the chainmail with double damage can go ham, right? That would be so much better, in my opinion. Because uh, it's going to give this ogre, like, his ogre is going to have like 270 damage or whatever it is. And with the chainmail, he's going to be a monster. Alright, let's see Yeeks. What did he end up what did, what did he end up going in? So he ended up going into um, a Knights, as we said, because he had the Drow 2, then he hit the Bat 2 as well. If Yeeks hits the second Bat Rider right now, he's going to be a god. Like, double Bat Rider, their spell stacks... Uh, off each other, right? Oh, he actually put in a bat one. I don't know about this play. It's got three bat riders. It's gonna be interesting. Let's see how. Let's see how the damage here is. Let's take a quick look. See, this is the problem. Okay, uh, when you run bat rider two star with bat rider one star. Okay, listen to this. Whoever triggers the first napalm, that's the amount of damage it's going to deal, okay? So because the Batrider 1 triggered the napalm first, it got all the credit for the damage, and it's activating on Sticky Napalm level 1. So it's only triggering, it's only adding 20 damage to all your Batrider spells. So what you actually want is a Batrider 2 star to trigger the napalm. That way, all the Batrider's napalms after that... Uh, that keep stacking it up would trigger for 40 damage a hit so in this position i'd probably give the what do you call it the um what's that thing called the brooch to the bat and like put him on the outer end or whatever so he can trigger the napalm first if you're gonna run bat one with bat bat two Yeah, the bad one triggered in this situation because he has, it has a void stone exactly so it's actually he's actually losing a lot of damage on yix's end i feel for now so here the bat two triggered first which was helpful for him because he was able to do that extra bit of damage but not strong enough his um so when knight's peak is when they hit all their two-star units on Omni, CK, Abaddon, Luna, whatever units that you decide to buy. And that's around uh, that's around round 17 to 18. That's when knights are like really peaking. When everything is two-starred. Let's look at TK's board. 
He's also going into Knight. So TK and Yeeks, the two top boards are going into Knight. So this could be problematic because um, actually TK is a lot deeper in Knights. Yeeks has Bat Riders, but, but I feel Bat Riders is like the worst Knight. He's like the Knight that is only good when you have two of them very early in the game. But it's not the Knight that you want a 3 star. The Knights that you want a 3 star is Abaddon, Luna, Chaos Knight. Omni and Bat is like a waste of gold when you try to 3 star them in my opinion. And normally you don't actually have enough gold to try and 3 star them either. I also often see people 3 starring Witch Doctor which I also like think it's kind of hard. Because think about it, how many pieces are you 3 starring, what level are you staying at and how much bench space do you have? How can you 3 star Batrider, Luna, Abaddon, Omni Knight, CK all at the same time and maybe throw in a Witch Doctor? That's 6 units. You know? Like, you're gonna run out of space and the best time to 3 star CK and Luna is at level 7. Right? So, it's better to focus on like 3 starring like these 3 important units because these are the ones that do the most damage as well. Omni is just there as a knight label, that's pretty much it. The game you lost? What are you talking about? Yeah, what about that game? Alright guys, get ready to ping anyone who loses the round. Are you heading out? Yeah. Oh wow, I was muted. Holy shit, no one lost a round, guys. That's incredible. Dude, this is a high skill lobby right here. Ooh, someone's got an Arcord in their shop, but it's useless to him because he's a Knight player. What did people get? So Smuggler player, oh my goodness, TK is a god right now. TK with a Smuggler hit Mask of Madness Luna too. This Knight board just peaked. Just peaked. Yeek, Yeeks, Yeeks also got his uh, CK 2 star and Omni 2 star. Too bad Knights are being contested. Demonic is sneaking in the mages. But Kyle's is also going mages with the druids. Then we got Baby. Baby's in last place, loose streaking like crazy. Baby's ranked 225, guys. What's happening here? What's Baby up to? He's oh, he's going for the um He's going for the hunter play. He's going for the the Reddit strat, boys. Stay on six, three star everything. But he's really strong now, though. He's got the three warriors two star. He's got the three hunters two star. He's gonna start winning from here. He's not really last place. He's gonna like shoot up really quickly. Plockets uh, got the elusives, but these are not that strong elusives. He does have seventy. What the heck? CM. Oh, so his plockets is also going for mage build with the elusives as well. Leroy here, three warriors, elus, uh, druids, just really a random build. Maybe possibly just going for um, good stuff, Mr. Leroy. But loot streaking, going good stuff is like a real big feels bad man. Who else we got? Jehan. Marana doing some crazy stuff. So the board I like the most right now is um, TK. I really like TK's board because he's got a uh, mask of man. Okay, TK just lost as I look at him. He lost against uh, Baby's board. So okay, that's fair though, because Baby's board is insane. He's got six. Uh, he's got six two-star units and uh, two extremely powerful synergies completed. This is the peak of Hunter. So I guess we'll talk about the Hunters a bit, right? When you have, uh, when you're playing this um, hunter, brawny hunter build, you're actually 
playing to lose rounds so you can get additional rerolls until you complete these units right you complete the pudge you complete the axe the slaughter then you complete the beast draw and winager the moment all six of these units are two starred which is around 15 okay you can start win streaking like crazy from there because this board has the highest amount of dps any board will see on round 15 okay like baby just fought kyle's board right kyle's has np2 star sf2 star and mages and this brawny hunter board just beat it okay it's a lot of damage like that's a lot of magic damage so now what uh, Bebe is trying to do here is he's trying to stay on level 6 and keep rolling to find his 2 star units I'm mean, sorry 3 star units and especially since no one else is contesting him for these beastmasters and slaughters it should be easier for him to try to 3 star them so he actually has the second beastmaster if he goes to level 7 he reduces the chances of finding draw ranger and axe because your four cost, your one cost odds drop from thirty five to twenty five percent. But in competitive play or in a higher level play, I personally wouldn't stay on six. I would still go to seven. One to free up bench space, and two, uh, I can just use the second beastmaster to continue winning rounds. Like if you watch Gara play when he plays his build, he never stays on six. He either stays on. 5 until he 2 stars everything and then he'll go to 7 like he'll straight go from 5 to 6 and then the next level after that go to 7 and throw in his uh 4th hunter which would be either a beastmaster a sniper or a lycan so he has a lot of dps and he can maintain his win streak like baby could have actually had a big win streak right but he's just more focused on trying to uh, just 3 star all his units. But now he's like feeling the pressure because the round's about to start and he cannot get bench space back. So he's digging deep and now what is he going to sell? He's panicking, he's panicking, he's panicking. Oh, he found the Beastmaster at the last second. He needs to sell something. To oh, the Drow sold. Gege. The Drow sold and the Wind Ranger 2 star sold. Oh my gosh. He lost a Wind Ranger 2 star and he lost a Jaw Ranger. Cause he's staying on 6, he doesn't he lacks the bench space and his eco is shot. He's at 26 health. Imagine that Beastmaster did not hit there, how much he would have lost. Mr. Baby 872 with the Reddit with the Reddit place. Reddit strap for the loss. Pepe hands. <laughs> <laughs> Rip. Okay, don't put Mask of Madness on Wind Ranger, bro. Put it on your Drow. Drow, Mask of Madness actually does a lot of damage. Let the Wind Ranger have uh, the Blightstone and let her cast her ult. You know why? Because if you don't let her cast her ult, you will not have AoE damage. The problem with uh, Wind Ranger not having. Uh, uh, putting Mask of Madness on Wind Ranger is you will lack AoE damage. That's the biggest reason. Like you're gonna lose to boards who have some summons or too many units because with one uh power shot and two beastmaster axes you can pretty much clear every single board but without the without the um power shot two beastmaster axes sometimes cannot clear every single board that's why you don't put mask of madness on the wind ranger like there's always a math behind most of these things it's pretty cool that, yeah, Wind Ranger can shoot really fast, she does DPS, blah blah blah. But like, this spell is very very powerful, right? In terms of AoE. Oh my gosh, look at TK's bench. See, he's a smart man. He didn't try to 3 star Omni Knight first. He tried to 3 star the Luna and the Abaddon and his bench was cleared. And now that he finished the CK, he can move on to 3 star in the Omni Knight. Right? So very good plays. He's got um, 
And now he finished Abraham too. Holy shit. Round 22, Abraham CK. And that's the strength of, you know, focusing on trying to three star some specific units instead of trying to three star everything at the same time and possibly throw in the game, right? TK is doing the night build the correct way. And this is the night build that I fear like all the time when I play. Like if players do this night build, I'm like, okay, I don't want to fucking play against night boards, you know? Like if they hit these units on uh, like round 22 like this because they're rolling on seven and they're only focusing on trying to find the Abaddon, CK and Luna, it's so scary. Like he even has a Batrider one star. Just, it's just there for the bonus. Stop blaming my strat. <laughs> Dude, that build is so trash. Oh, Plockets died? Poor Plockets. He was having a rough time figuring out what he was, what comp he was going into. So that's why he died. Like, if you don't have a set idea of what you're going to go into by like round 15 already, you're often going to get 8th place. But if you also try to force a comp from the very beginning of the game, you can also get 8th place. So you need to like find a balance. The best thing I can suggest for players to improve is like, um, try to have two or three comps that you know how to play, like build into, like understand what your eight units look like your first eight units should look like. And then when you get some pieces that can direct yourself into one of those comps, you go into that, you know? Like you know how to play Warrior Warlocks, so you get some Warriors early game, then okay, you can go Warrior Warlock. You get some scrappy, you know how to play scrappy Demon Hunters, you get some Scrappy's early game or Demon Hunters early game, go into scrappy Demon Hunters, right? But the best thing you can do is like write it down, write down your composition that you know how to play. Or like that you know that how to um like what it looks like and it's gonna help you a lot so what's jayhan doing right now he's trying to level to nine but what is he playing he's playing scrappy hunters at the moment very interesting he's playing scrappy hunters but he's not trying to three star sniper or lycan and he's going to level nine is he gonna transition into mages there's so many mages already in this game though. I'm really unsure what Jayhan's plan is because he has invested a lot of his gold into his um level up. Now let's look at Yeeks, who's the other knight board who's gonna suffer heavily because um TK stole the good knight. So TK is like so Yeeks is the knights, right? And TK is like the guy she told you not to worry about. You know? <laughs> Yeeks, you know, he's he's still a knight. He's got, you know, the bat riders. But then Tiki's a knight that she told you not to worry about. Doesn't feel good, I'll tell you that. Definitely doesn't definitely doesn't feel good. Oh Plockis, you tried to pivot three times, didn't hit. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate, man. Good job, Leroy. Alright, let's see who's gonna lose this round, guys. Ping, 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 okay? Is, is this gonna be the first lobby ever where none of the players lose any creep rounds? Okay, it's freaking... Okay, to be fair, it's Wildkins. You can't lose to Wildkins. Doesn't matter what you do. You can't lose to Wildkins. To be honest, I just reposition against Wildkins because I feel like it's a good habit, right? To do it. You lost round 20 creeps? Leroy? No, you didn't. Oh, did you lose round 20 creeps? Okay. Let's see what people hit. Oh, TK got Smuggler. Did you get Smuggler on round 20 or 25? I, I forgot when he got Smuggler, but that's really freaking good. Um, Bracer Abaddon, I guess. Arc Warden with Maelstrom. So Leroy is going for the good stuff build. Uh, interesting. So if you're trying to avoid the punch Leroy, you should play your Arc Warden on the left side, not the right side. Because watch what happens right now. Okay, he actually did plant on the right side. 
Because sometimes what happens is Arcorian won't plant on the right side. Your units will move forward and he'll plant in front of you as well. But on the left side, it's like guarantee every time. Like in this game, it's really weird. Sometimes assassins like jump in your space. The game calculates the assassin is already in your space before you can do something, you know? Like it's really unfortunate. But that's just how the, the game works. Like I don't know how the priority system functions, but it's just like that. So let's look at Jehan again, what he was, what his plan was. He actually found Tai 2 star. Everything he has is kind of 2 star, but there's not like something relevant that's like a, you know, like a big boom that can change the tide of the battle on this scrappy board, right? Normally when you think scrappies, their strength is like when they have 3 star tinker, or if they're all 2 star, at least they have mages who can help them amplify their damage. So it's really weird. Scrappy Hunters is probably like <laughs> the worst of the Hunter builds because it doesn't scale very well. Like it sounds attractive but yeah it doesn't scale very well. Damn Chef! Another gift is sub to Leroy! Thank you. Welcome Leroy to a loyalty club. But he ended up winning the round because you know Marana is like a is such a Marana is such a funny unit, you know? She can just like squeeze out wins out of nowhere. What's Yeeks up to now? So Yeeks decided that he's gonna give up on um, going for the 3 star dream because TK already stole all the good knights and 3 star them. So Yeeks is now actually pivoting his knights into a good stuff board. He actually went to 9 and rolled down to 0 trying to find some good upgrades. So he found Doom 2 star and he found Dragonite 2 star. But this Dragonite does not have something to enable him yet. Which means <coughs> he won't be able to activate it yet, right? Oh, the guy she said, the knight he, she said not to worry about. All right, let's see. It's a it's a one-on-one -on -one fight for the girl. Who's gonna do it? The good stuff knights or the three star knights? Uh-oh. Uh oh, it looks like the good stuff knights is crumbling. <laughs> Poor Yeeks. <laughs> Yeeks is at 37 health. The knight she told you not to worry about is at 78 and wind shrieking. Pog champ. Oh, we, we should add our sub, right? We got uh, 20. What? Hype! So good. Dude, three three stars. He's had these since like round twenty four or something. Cause he did our night build. He's smart. He listened. He went only for the good knights. So Leroy is the one who has enough gold. He's got decent upgrades. He's missing a doom too. He's got another arc cordon lined up. I'm not too sure about that one. If I'm Leroy, I would definitely think about going to ten first before like keep rolling down here. Cause like he's healthy enough and he's near round 30, he had enough gold. I would have definitely tried to go to round, uh, 10, cause if I go to 10 it's easier to find Troll Warlord, easier to upgrade my Doom as well. Especially if he's doing okay for now. Like the Tombstone definitely helped him um, sustain his board a little bit better. But he just fought Yeeks who actually spent all his mana. M to be honest, melee form Dragonite is not that bad. He actually gets better drag uh, breathe fires off. But uh and he's meant to be a tank in knights. So what is Yeeks' plan then? He's got an arc corner in his build. Wait, how does your arc corner summon a clone? He's stuck between four range heroes. Pepehands? You have to wait till everyone moves out of the way before you can summon, huh? What if they don't move out of the way? What if they're right in front of you and then only the melee units move up? Okay, round 30, guys. We're gonna ping, okay? Anyone who loses the round. This board is probably losing the round. No stuns. Anyone who doesn't have stuns on this round normally loses. Money's on TK, yeah. 
Somewhat DK has 10 HP regen. Yes, it's very good. Oh, he got human silence off. Oh, that human silence came in clutch. Oh, oh, he's healing it back. Okay, nice. He didn't lose. TK obviously will win. Leroy, Leroy lost. Someone else, Jihan lost. Kyle's, Kyle's won. Whoa, Pog, baby won. Demonic lost. Okay, ping, ping, ping. Wait, why can't I hear the pings? If someone loses. Yo. <laughs> Alright, so who's who's going out next? Let's look at the uh, boards who have gone all in. Demonic has six mages with Kotal, two star, and he's got a uh, uh, helm on him, right? He's fighting against two pudges. This Kotal positioning is a huge throw. I would change the positioning of the Kotal and either the CM or the Ogre Magi or something like that. I would definitely not put the Kotal in that spot. He does have a Morphling 3 who's helpful and he just leveled to 10 so I can put in the Morphling, I mean the Enigma. He's got 3 Primordials unfortunately. He doesn't have, wait what's the mage is missing? Lich right? He's missing Lich, that's very sad. I would have taken the reroll to find Lich and put in Lich if I see it. Like over the Enigma. That's for sure. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. This Dragonite with Blink Dagger is a huge throw, buddy. <laughs> you actually don't want your Dragonite to like um, ruin your positioning of your units. I think you want it to tank in front of you so he can breathe fire in one direction and Dakota can also like uh, use the blast in one direction. Because if the Dragonite blinks away from your team, then the enemies focus him and the other half focus your team, you're going to be screwed, right? So if you want Blink, just give it to the Razor. If you want him to like create some chaos, at least he'll cast his plasma right away and then the enemy will come back to you and then it'll buy you enough time for the Kotal to cast Blast. If you put Blink on DK, like you're just making him die too quickly and like the enemy will be out of position to get hit by all your spells. All right, Kyle's is almost dead too. Let's look at Kyle's board. Kyle's has a shot off in three with three mages. Very interesting comp he has here. Not the most optimal comp, but let's see how this works. He actually opted to give the SF the helm over the Kotal. I don't know if I can agree with that. And he doesn't have Warlock synergy, so the shot offing kind of just dies instantly. Pep the hands. Lost to the, lost to the brawny hunters. So the bra baby actually still ended up. 3 star in the Wind Ranger, even though he, uh... That's Death Knot, right? Is Death Knot playing? Wait, is that Aegis? Oh, Kyle's... Oh no, he died. Kyle's died. Okay, Kyle's died. He still he still got the 3 star Wind Ranger, even though one of them sold accidentally. And Demonic died too! Oh no! Who beat Demonic, guys? Now we're down to the top 5. Who's it gonna be? My my... Oh! Jehan actually has a 2 star Techies. And he's still running Hunters. Interesting, interesting. He's almost got 3-star Sniper too. Let's see his shop. What's he got? He actually locked for a Dusa. I wouldn't lock this. You're so close to dying. I think you're better off finding 3-star uh, Tinker or Sniper Renos. Not locking for a second Dusa. Like, the second Dusa means you need to find one more Dusa. Right? That means you need to live until round 36. In order to, like... Find all your upgrades for Tinker, Sniper, and Dusa too. And you're already dead, so. Pepe hands. Jehan is out. Baby strikes one more down. Brawny Hunters. Reddit is doing it. Yeeks lost another round with his good stuff um, night board. Yeeks is like on a timer. Like early game, he had good health. But this good health is only helping him like stay alive for now. He's he's probably the weakest one amongst these four players right now. Lero is pretty strong. He's got two Arc Wardens. Does he also has a Troll Warlord, the six warriors. And Leroy went to level 10 like we advised him to. <sighs> he did decide that. That's good. But TK, obviously, the god player right here. TK, troll two. This is the Chad of all Chads right here, boys. I'm pretty sure there could be some item fixing that could happen. 
the Chad of all Chads with Smuggler. With fa friends and family discount, two star troll, three star knights, taking down TK. I mean, taking out Leroy, down to 10 health. Bebe took out, Be dude, Bebe is just knocking everyone out one by one. Be this is like the third person Bebe just killed, right? So TK, I would highly suggest you put the chainmail on the CK, not the poaching knife. Your CK is actually your tank, your damage dealer, so you don't want poaching knife on him. You want him to stay alive as long as he can. He already has good damage. Chainmail on your CK would be the best, best thing for you to do. And I also believe that um, your Troll Warlord probably does more DPS with Mask of Madness than the Luna does. Like, yeah. Probably does do more damage. He really wants to finish this Necro, wants to finish Omni Knight. Let's see what item got. Moonshard, Moonshard. Okay. Oh, now he's got Moonshard Troll. That's okay too. Either way, like, the Troll deserves to have a better item because he's two starred. He's a freaking god. He's a god unit when he's two starred. And Tiki is even a level 10 knight, guys. It's a level 10 knight. The Chad of all Chads. Baby. Alright, let's look at Baby. Is he gonna knock out someone else? He still needs Shadow Shaman. Leroy does did find one troll warlord. Baby is still level 7. Can he actually get top 3 being level 7? The good stuff board has arrived. Good, the good stuff board is destroying Mr. Baby. Mr. Baby, he knocked everyone else out, but the good stuff board has come for him now. Goodbye. And Leroy, oh wait, who's gonna die first? Is it Leroy? Or is it gonna be Baby? Oh, Leroy's still alive, two health. T so TK's board only did eight damage. To Leroy there. That means it's a really close battle. Okay, it's not a close battle anymore, guys. Omni 3 is online. That's another 3 star knight. Meanwhile, Leroy's board not getting any stronger here. How can you win? I really don't know how you can win, actually. If I'm in his position. I'm not actually sure what I would do. <sighs> the CK with Chainmail is just living forever, dude. It's actually just way too strong. He can't even get through the first layer of the Knights, let alone the second layer. The second layer of Knights has Troll 2, DK2, Luna 3. GG. The Chad Knights have done it. TK, the champion, Big Boss 3 player, the underdog, against all odds, the highest ranking player, Yeeks, who was also trying to contest him for nice, only ended up in 4th place. Reddit in 3rd place. And good stuff in second place where they always normally are. <laughs> GG guys. GG. That's the thing about the Reddit build, right? Reddit Re Reddit Reddit can only reach you to third place. So if you stay on six and roll for your three stars, if you're not Lord player, you can actually gain MMR. But if you're a high Lord player, you need to get top 1 or 2, so reddit build doesn't work. And to get top 1 or 2, you need very high HP early game. Shame on lord player. <laughs> TK boss. Does it feel good TK? Look at this legendary Chad build guys. Omni 3, Avalon 3, CK 3, Luna 3, Troll 2, DK 2, this is like literally the dream. and. The most Chad of all Chads, the Batrider 1 star, styling on fools.
The Bat Rider one star. The dude didn't even find Bat three before he a uh, Bat two before he even three starred all his units. He didn't even need Bat two to win this game. <laughs> you can't even fight Shadow Shaman for troll four buff. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs> 